At this point, you've probably seen it all over social media. The memes are rolling out now. And of course, I had to jump in on it. Why not? It's fun and it's funny to think about. Uh, and I also covered it in my initial reaction video, which is on my channel. If you didn't see it, I'll link to it down below. Two professional walleye anglers caught cheating at the Lake Erie Fall Brawl Tournament. They were stuffing weights inside of their walleye in an attempt to weigh those fish with its increased weights to then win the tournament. Now, while I covered the initial reaction to what we saw in the video footage from the weigh-in when these guys were busted and they were pulling out the weights from the fish, it was an incredible sight to see. It was just so egregious, but it left us with a lot of questions about what transpired. How did they know to check these guys? Like, just what's the whole backstory to the footage and, and that went viral and what we have here today is the actual tournament director now he's at the beginning of the collage video again go look in the description below for the link in the reaction video he's in the very uh beginning portion throughout it mostly but in the very beginning of it he's in there man and you can just see him throwing his arms around profanity and all that stuff and then it cuts to some other scenes and him going through the fish and all that stuff but what we have here is the actual tournament director and we're going to get an explanation as to what transpired so let's jump straight into this video because i need to know those of you who don't know who i am um jason fisher i'm the tournament director with the lake erie walleye trail and i'm going to give an official statement I want to start out by apologizing to a few people uh, before I make this official statement. Um, I pride myself in getting the youth involved in fishing and welcoming the youth to all of our tournaments. Love to hear that. Um, I pride myself in making sure that they feel special while they attend our events. Uh, at Friday's event, I used language that wasn't friendly to anyone, youth or otherwise. I acted out of emotion, and for that, I apologize to anyone who heard the video and audio. Wow. that Him coming out and saying that as a side note, as a preface to the official statement, it just says a lot about his character, man. And and uh, if you look at the reaction video, if you look at the the montage from, from this whole thing, he's at the very beginning of it. He's flailing his arms around, you know, visibly upset. Right, visibly as upset at the, the these two guys. I'm not even going to address their names, right? The, just the two guys that were cheating. Um, and he cursed, you know, and so on and so forth. For him to, um, one, just kind of acknowledge that and address that and apologize says a lot about his character. I don't think anyone faults him. I certainly don't fault him for expressing that. That that's a hard pill to swallow. That that is that is like wow, you know. I, I, in fact, in the original video, I commended him for how he handled it. As the video goes on, he he uh, gets everyone to kind of calm down a bit, and he just gathers himself and proceeds on with this whole process of checking these fish and so on and so forth. So, dude. Honestly, it was nice for you to apologize, but you really didn't have to. I don't. I think I can speak for the sentiment of so many anglers. Like, it's understood. Certainly, the good thing is that you didn't allow it to escalate into physical stuff, and that would have been another thing. So let's keep going on. On Friday, nine thirty of twenty twenty two, we witnessed one of the most disgusting, dishonest acts that the fishing world has ever seen in it's lifetime. True. It's true. There's always been stories about dishonesty and competition, but I personally have never seen anything quite like this, in competitive fishing, that is. The individuals involved here appear to have put greed and ego in front of anything else, forever tainting our sport. True. When I, when I was offered the opportunity to take the reins of the loot from my predecessors, I was handed a tournament series with years of history and stability. Taken over a few years ago, I set out to run a tight ship. I brought new energy, new ideas, and an overall new vision where I wanted the loot to be. I looked up to the national circuits. I knew with enough hard work we could bring a similar event. I sold this to all my anglers with hard work and dedication to our events, constantly growing the schedule and adding to our event footprint. I worked tirelessly, almost to a fault, trying to grow the loot into what it is today. You all responded by filling field after field with 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 plus boat fields. That's amazing. I knew that I earned your trust as tournament director and that only fueled my desire to give you guys what you wanted. 
what Lake Erie deserved. Tournament fishing represents so much more to me than what's being highlighted right now on social media. These things my anglers do to serve the community astound me. They get involved in the community. They donate time. They donate food to local causes. They put on seminars for the youth, youth fishing clinics, and they show the next generation how much fun the outdoors can be. They take wounded warriors and veterans fishing. They constantly look for ways to give back to the community. Most importantly, I see what my anglers do in times of need. They rally together and they make sure that per that any person or family knows they have everything they need to battle anything life throws at them. This very tournament on Friday, perfect strangers came together raising money and awareness for a family who has a six-year-old battling leukemia. This year alone, I can safely say our local anglers associated with the loot raised around $10,000 for different families. Last year was the same. These very guys started a charity event behind my own back, didn't tell me, and they raised names or raised funds in my name and made this an annual event each spring. Uh, and we donated the money to local ang anglers or families in the time of need. That's awesome. Tournament anglers fuel this economy with paycheck after paycheck being spent at hotels, gas stations, local bait shops. They also give their sponsors advertisement and spread the word on great new products constantly fueling this industry. Tournament anglers extend the fishing season into the cold spring and far past the fall into the snowflakes outdoor, outside a normal recreational angler season. To see so much negative light on our sport hurts me to the core. Fishing is a national pastime and something that's passed down from generation to gen generation. My fondest memories as a tournament director stem from guys like Mike Moken and 13-year-old Jack Moken winning Team of the Year my first year as tournament director. Gary Pontegrass fishing with young Jordan and Gavin, both of which won the loot MVPs this year at Lorraine. I can't wait to talk about my son or daughter fishing with me, weighing in a great five-fish bag like Lake Erie legend Gary Zart does, when he talks to me with tears in his eyes about Kid Walleye. My man, my man Clarence Dooley, fishing with his daughter at the first tournament that I've ever hosted, nicknamed Monkey Wrench, and they cashed, I believe, a third place check. These things are the things that need to be spotlighted right now, not 12 ounce weights and dishonesty. I can tell you as a tournament director, this type of behavior will not be tolerated. I'll figure out a way to make this right for my anglers. I hope we can learn from this and make some changes in tournament fishing that protect the integrity of all circuits. It's true. That's big. All the information from Friday has been turned over to the Division of Wildlife, and they'll handle the case or any potential criminal action from this point forward. The Lake Erie Walleye Trail has turned over all records and submitted a statement as to what happened on Friday to the Ohio Division of Natural Resources. Finally, I hear all you anglers. We will fix this. We'll start by implementing new rules at weigh-ins and in boat checks. We'll work hard this off-season and learn from you all as to what safeguards you want to see in our series, and I promise you we'll implement change. You all deserve it. You trusted me and it shows. I make mistakes and we all do, but event after event you prove your loyalty to the loot and tournament angling. I see your overwhelming support in this challenging time and for that I'm grateful. We'll come back from this and we will show the world that the best walleye fishery in the world has the best walleye anglers in the world and the loot will be your platform to shine for years to come. This will make us stronger. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the support. And lastly, to all parties involved, I hope they're okay and I'm praying for you guys. And uh, loot strong, guys. Levi strong. A couple of things to kind of break down in this in this official statement. One, it might have been just uh, wishful thinking that we would have kind of got a, a play by play of what transpired, how he was notified of this. How did he know to check these fish? I mean, that's all things that we're curious about. There's been murmurs here and there in social media. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. You just don't really know until you hear from a, like a firsthand account. So there's potentially we might not we may never know what the sequence sequence of events were that led to him discovering this whole thing right so that's one thing 
But more importantly, just him coming out and making this statement and how he's handling it. And the guy looks young, too, to be leading this tournament series for for, for these walleye anglers in the area, in Lake, Lake Erie area. Um, it says a lot. I'm just, I'm just really impressed by his um, his character, how he handled it, how he's approaching this, um, his position on it is in terms of let's not let this negative thing overshadow all the positive things that, that the community of anglers are doing, which is great. You love to see it. That's one thing that's that often isn't talked about with, with uh, tournament groups and fishing clubs is the, the stuff that do to uh, give back to the communities to improve the fishing opportunities for us all. So great to hear that. Love that. And you can tell he's visibly just upset, emotional. His eyes are watered up. There was parts when he was talking about uh, what members in, in the fishing community uh, are doing that, you know, you, you just, you know, you, you saw it, you can rewind it and, and see that he's emotionally um, upset about this. And, and I, I certainly think that if I was in his shoes, I would too. I, I, you're working towards something. You're, you're trying to build this stuff up. He, he says like he took over this responsibility about two years ago now, or maybe this is his second year. I can't remember or something like that. He's relatively new to the position. He's a younger guy. He looks like, right. Which is great to see younger guys taking spots in these, in these organizations to keep bringing in more younger people, pushing uh, the, the sport forward and bringing new ideas more importantly. Right. Um, I can only imagine if I was in his shoes, what I would be thinking is I'm trying to build this for all of us and for, and it gets derailed or sidetracked by the actions of two people, right? All the things that he's been working towards and trying to work for, for the benefit of everyone is now um, just overshadowed by the actions of two individuals. Overall, though, I got to give him an A plus for how he handled this. And hopefully this is the last time we ever have to hear about anyone cheating. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. See you later.